Is you should not be teaching the law. What I said is you should not be teaching the law. Finger, why are you preaching? So now, what is my sin? That's my question. You lied on me earlier. I lied to you. I apologize, Jordan, by, by saying but that you said it's not. What I'm saying is we all sin. Oh God, this thing, the Bible is known as the book okay. of the law of God. Okay. Read. Okay. It gave the sin. It gave what? It gave the sin. It gave what? It gave the sin. When you give the sin, many are teaching. The laws of okay. God. Right, right. right. John chapter 16. So repent. And John 14. 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 What I said is you should not be teaching the law. So repent. And John 14. What I said is you should not be teaching the law. So repent. I'm going to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow followers and believers of the truth. Shalom to the elect. So I want to touch on this video um, I ran across with the Christian. I don't know what group this is. It looks like an IUIC spinoff or something. I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, we were going, in, well, they were going into it with each with each other. And it's kind of crazy. You know, these Christians, they always say, forget the law. Now, this is kind of dangerous to tell, even in a society today that's built on corruption and just doesn't even really have anything to do with the most high on the right-hand side. They even keep laws. You know what happens if you don't have laws, right? You have anarchy, you have chaos, you have disorder, you have confusion. And even in the society as Babylon the Great that we are in today, even with the laws that is in, that is in place, it's still confusion because it's not of the most high. So, so can you imagine walking with a book that is given to you, the book of the laws that is given to you and you saying, 
well, we don't got to keep them at all, right? The, the thing that go hand in hand with the law is faith. And why do we need the faith in mercy? Because we cannot absolutely keep the law. That is part of the curse of not being able to keep the law. So let me go to Galatians 3. This is a scripture they will pull. I'm only going to read a little bit because you had to read the whole full thing and get a bigger understanding. But I want to get to the point. This is titled, Yahweh redeemed us. Christ redeemed us. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. So you have Christians say, well, wait a minute. The, the law is a, is, is a curse. That's why we shouldn't keep it. That is not what that's talking about. The, it, when you read it, it says Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. Let's go to Deuteronomy 27 and 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of the law to do them, and the people shall say amen. That is a curse. And what do we do? Right? We're doing exactly what this guy just did. Walked around saying that you don't have to keep the law. Right? Walking around saying you had to keep the law. And then you had wicked men who was using the law for filthy lucre or, or just to, for control. Right? They was using the law to gain advantage in situations. So they were just blindly just following the law, blindly following it, you know, because they didn't really, they may have believed, but they didn't, they were just blindly following because they didn't understand faith. You have to have faith. If you're, if you're put in a situation where all you're doing is following the law and you don't have situations in place to where you have faith, then that's an issue. Even when you read the Old Testament, when, when we went and went to war and things like that, even David, he had to have faith. He had to have faith bestowed upon him to be able to do. So it's just what it is. Now we go on down to the, um, it also says, <clears throat> for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So we were cursed <clears throat> because we didn't keep the law. So let's go on. This, is, this section is also called purpose of the law, right? So why does one minute Paul is saying, you know, um, the law you know we don't need to keep the law <clears throat> we never said we don't really need to keep it but it seems like he's coming against the law and in the next minute he's for the law like, wait a minute you know this is also in place because you had people like Timothy's father whose mother was a Jew and he was following Greek so she still had to follow can you imagine if he went and told her, you know what, you ain't got to follow the law, which means that now she can just drop him and go to somebody else? <clears throat> you know, it don't work that way. It says, uh, verse 18, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, right? But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Right, because what? First John, I think he pulled it out. Let's read that. First John 3 and 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is transgression of the law. Sometimes these videos can take a little longer because you got to go into the different points. <clears throat> okay. It says... It says here, yep, uh, for the law for which, um, and I say that the covenant has confirmed before God and Yahweh the law, which was 440 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham for a promise. Okay, I think I read that. Um, it said but the scripture have concluded all all's under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ Yahweh Shah, might be given to them that believe right so you got to understand the timeline and what was going on right you had some of us who didn't believe at all and remember Paul was using guile 
to get Israelites. So um, you can imagine if someone came up to the camp and they didn't have their beard and we yell out, you know, you got to have a beard to come up to the camp. We wouldn't say that. We would let them, you know, learn as he go up, go along and teach him and then he would grow in the law. Right? Because that's very man that don't have a beard can have faith, more faith than a man with a beard. <laughs> you know, once he gets in, in the future, once he gets himself together, that man might be of the elect. You just don't know. This is why we can't say fringes is going to save you. Yes, that's part of our heritage and tradition, but those fringes is not going to save you. That's where the guy was right at. Because you can have those fringes and go get the MOTB. Anyway, let's go to Romans. Let's get more clarity on this. Let's go to um, Romans. We're going to go into faith, right? Romans 3 and 27. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded? By what law? Of works? Nay, but the law of faith, right? This is what's being said. It's, it's the law, but it's faith. They go hand in hand. That's why it says faith without works is dead. The deeds of the law without work, without faith is dead. And faith without works. You got to have both. If you have faith, you're going to do whatever it takes to please the Heavenly Father. Right? To the best of your ability. It says, by the law of faith, therefore we conclude that no man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? If he is not, all, is he not the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, Israelites. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and circumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. See, Paul is not saying get rid of the law. Because if you don't teach the law and you get rid of the law, then you have transgression of the law, which is sin. Right? And you don't want to purposely just go out and just go sin because you don't got to, uh, because you want to transgress the law. If you don't keep the law, that's transgression of the law. Trans sin is transgression of the law. So that in a whole is the transgression of the law. It's, uh, even when you say you ain't got it, you don't have to keep the law, that is transgression of the law. Matthew 5 and 17, um, Yahweh Shah, the one you call Jesus, said, Think not I come to destroy the law or the prophets. Why? Because they was thinking that he was coming to do away with the law. No, he came to bring faith, I mean mercy and salvation to the Israelites. That's what that was all about. Let's go to Mark 12 and 29. And Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. That first commandment, here he's saying that you got to love the Lord with all your heart and strength. You mean to tell me in a situation <clears throat> that you may not be able to do certain things according to the law because you did have the sacrifice. Yahweh came, sacrifice. Yahweh baptized by John the Baptist so you don't have to baptize. But you mean to tell me you love the Lord with all your heart and he says don't eat crabs and shrimp because that's the first thing on dead bodies when they pull it out of the water and you say the hell with that the law done away with. That's crazy. That's like having a family. You, you got a family in a house and you leave and your children uh, left behind but you tell them to clean the basements but you have the keys to it. You say clean the house but you got the keys to the basement. They can't get in the basement. What are they supposed to do? Because they can't get in the basement, they decide not to clean the house? No, they're still going to have to clean the house to the best of their ability. They can't get in the basement. That's an order I said to clean the whole house. But they can't clean the whole house. But does that mean they look at it and say, since we ain't got the key, to hell with it. And this is the mindset of Christianity. This is why our people are so goddamn destroyed. Let's go to Romans Let's go to Romans 12, I mean uh, 3. I want to go to, let's go to um, Romans 6 and 17, 6 and 14, I believe. 
It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. This is where it gets confusing, because it's saying, hey, well, you're not under the law, but you're under grace. Right, but you're not under certain laws, because, first of all, you don't sacrifice, which we are presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, but there's certain things you can't do. In order to have grace, there has to be something in place for you to have grace with. If you didn't have laws, then you wouldn't need the grace. Right? Imagine needing grace. If you like, if you didn't need grace, like if we was eating pure, clean food, great food, we wouldn't need to pray over our food, right? We wanted to pray over it if it was all clean and everything was night, uh, uh, you know, neat and tidy. We got to pray over it because we need grace. We need mercy because it may have pork in there. The whole point of grace is to be able to uh, um, be accepted to do something because you can, not because you don't want to. It says, what then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? Yahweh forbid. And that's the cutter right there, man. You can't get around that. Let's go to Romans 3 and 27. Where, where is boasting then? Is it excluded by the law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is not justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That a man is justified, Salakia, that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law, right? Is he the God of the Jews only? He is not um, also of the Gentiles? Yes, the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So this is where it gets confusing. It says, um, but by the law of faith. It says, therefore we conclude that a man is not justified by faith. Now you go to James 2. I think it says, faith without works is dead. A man is just, It says, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Right, because... You're going to do the best you can if you, you know, you have faith. When you have faith, you're going to do every, you know, the best you can by the law. So it says a man, uh, a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Why? Because there's certain things in the law that you can't do that is covered with faith and mercy and grace. That's why it says. Do we then make void the law through faith? With a question mark, God forbid. Yea, we established law. I mean, there's many more scriptures on that, but uh, I wanted to touch on that because um, it's these Christians will tell you you don't have to worry about the laws. It was the the Bible is regulations, laws and regulations. You know, law, statutes, and commandments. Can you imagine, again, as I said in the beginning of the video, there, there's a, a organization in place that is given laws. Everything operates off laws. You even have the laws of so-called physics. You have the laws of the animal world, the insect world, orders. It's all fitting into place. So when you go around saying, you don't got to keep the law, don't worry about the law, but repent from sin when sin is the transgression of the law. So that's not making any sense. How can you repent? You would need something to repent from, right? You would have to repent from your sins. And what sins are that? Is the transgression of the law. So clearly, you have to try to repent from the, uh, the sins that, you know, that you can't, you can't help. Or that you you know you've been doing and you gotta you gotta repent from it. Say no, hey, I don't want to do this. I need to be saved. You know you know my spirit need to be cleansed. Anyway, you know you'll be you know the elect. Let me say that the elect will be saved, but you need to be healed. You know that's all I have on that. Shalom.